newly signed XFC lightweight Kenny Cross. Appreciate the time, Kenny. Um, new frontier in front of you, man. How you feeling? I'm doing very well. Thank you for uh, having me on your show, man. Uh, yeah, the last time we spoke was pre Dana White Contender Series, and I was going up against a stud. Took him out. Now I'm here, and yes, yeah, just signed with XFC. Super ecstatic. You know, my life, everything's exciting right now. So I'm ready to answer some cool questions, baby. You know, in mid-September, you, you signed the deal exclusive long-term with XFC. Could you give us any details on this partnership with the organization? Um, well, the first task is to go out and win, the turn win this tournament. It's an uh, eight-man bracket, I believe. So I'll end up fighting three times if I continue to push through these guys and, and, and dominate these fights. So that's honestly the only thing that I have, you know, on my mind is to be the champion of this tournament. And then it looks like, you know, I might be with XSC for another two years after that. Things change, but I, I got to go out there and I got to dominate this tournament first and foremost. And, and that's what I'm setting my, my mind on right now. You know, I'm pretty sure that you were in talks with uh, other promotions, what separated XFC? You know, I made uh, an executive decision to go with my gut, to go with uh, someone uh, that's been around m me and watched me grow through the sport. And that's Myron Malaki. And, you know, I just, I, I have faith in this, in this organization and the relaunch of XFC, what they're doing with their athletes, the way that they treat me, you know, what we've discussed, everything. It just feels like the right route for me. I'm only 25. Uh, my birthday's next weekend. I'm about to be 26. Still, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm so new to the game. This seems like a really nice opportunity for me. Uh, I respect the UFC. I was, I've been hearing all kinds of things about how I could be just get into the UFC or another contender series shot, you know, which is all great. I loved it. I, I mean, I did it twice, so I had to, you know, want to do it in the first place. But I'm kind of going a different route. I want to make my blueprint and, and show these fighters that you can make a living in other organizations. And, and I think there's really good things that come for me as long as I continue to work. And I'm working a lot harder than I was before that last fight. Yeah, I talked to a lot of guys, you know, that fight all over the world for different promotions. And, and there are guys out there fighters out there in general that that make a good living that are champions of these promotions like ksw champs they're making real good money out there oh, you know you okay. got one championship you know and now mm -hmm. you got you you're the new frontier you're the new guy <laughs> the head of uh xfc now you know being the first fighter signed with them in the relaunch what does that mean to you it's it's a huge confident booster honestly because retrospect out before that last fight I was so confident and having to wrestle really took away from my confidence and having to have a boring fight not get a contract then to come over to XFC and have these guys talk to me like like I am special like I have worked hard like I do deserve a shot and a contract and for eyes to be on me shout out NBC like they just they I know my worth, and for a second there, I kind of didn't when, you know, things didn't go my way. So I had to battle adversity, and what I've been telling people, it's a blessing in disguise. From that, that first night, I was like, you know what? I won. Why does it feel like I lost? This is a blessing in disguise. And so then XFC, they they do their relaunch, and they do their uh, – I go and I met up with Myron. and had a, had a discussion with him at the office, the headquarters, and they were doing a tryout, and we, we came up with – some logistics of, you know, how they would treat me and what would happen. And I would be the face of the organization, the first unsigned prospect that they, that they give a contract to. And the number one seed of the tournament, like they really loved me and really believed in me. And Myron's been, he was at my second pro fight ever. And he loved me back then. And he's watched me grow. And, you know, through the fortitude, I've turned into this fighter that I am today. And I can't wait to take my skills and my talents over to the XFC and run through people and really show the world who I am. November 11th, XFC 43, your promotional debut in Atlanta. Can you give us yeah. any clues to who your first opponent is? Any clues? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. All I do know 
is I'm 11 and three. They got a, a guy that's 11 and three. They got another guy that's eight and zero. Oh, and those are the only people that I, I heard are possibly being in the tournament. So right off the bat, I'm like, damn, we got killers everywhere. So even though I'm first seed and I might fight the worst guy first, they're all going to be so good, bro. They're all going to be so good. And, uh, you know, I'm excited. I'm ready for the challenge. I can't wait to get into the finals. And this is where losing uh, back in my high school days at in the finals at state wrestling, this is where I'm going to kind of get revenge. You know, I'm going to kind of be able to take that chip off my shoulder and capitalize at the highest level in the finals and, and do everything right. Preparation, dedication, leading up to the fight, just doing it all right. I feel like will lead me to victory and it's all blessings over here. This, this lightweight championship tournament, you know, it's, it's pretty big because at the end of the rainbow, there is that belt, you know, there is the, the fame that comes with it. The mindset, you know, you mentioned, you know, that chip on your shoulder. Is there also a part of you where you want to prove a lot of people wrong from, you know, the, you know, there was a lot of haters probably when you didn't get signed by the oh, UFC yeah. coming out, right? The woodwork. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, there was more haters before the fight. Like all the Bolivian guys were sending me death threats and stuff, bro. Like I was like, I'm doing something right. Let's go. But after the fight, the biggest, the biggest hit to me was the fact that I didn't think uh, Dana White or Sean Shelby did their homework on me. I think Paul Felder did the most, and he, he I feel like he might have watched a couple of my fights. I don't think those guys really watched any of my fights because I'm not a boring fighter, and, and Sean Shelby didn't have much to say about the style that I fight. You know, all, all respect to him, but th I, that was the biggest hit to me is that I, I did put a lot into it. Every Proving people wrong is how I've gotten to where I'm at right now. I thoroughly... <laughs> enjoy p proving people wrong and turning haters into lovers and the whole nine yards and, and, and XFC staying away from the UFC for a while is, is everything to me. Like it's, I got to go out. I have to, I'm at, I add new strength and conditioning. Like my regiment has to change. I need to be amazing when I'm 28, 29, I need to start really destroying people building up and then let the world be like, wow, like that guy didn't get signed a couple of years ago. That's crazy. Cause I, I respect their decision not to sign me. It was a boring fight. It was my boringest fight ever. So, you know, it was just a business decision, executive move on my part. And yeah, XFC is where it's at. I try to tell everybody like you, you're good, bro. Come to XFC. Let's do some, let's do some work over here. I, I see money needed there to be made. Yeah. At the end of the day, man, it's, you have to make money, man, and, and that's a big part of it. You can't just hop in because you think it's the cool thing to do. You know, yeah. there's a, there's a little aspect of that. Yeah, that's what everyone did when I first started watching. Everyone was like, this is the coolest thing ever. I'm a fighter. Yeah. I'm a fighter, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Now, you know, you mentioned, you know, getting people to come over to XFC. Are there any veterans or prospects alike that you would like them to sign that you'd want to fight you know what i mean like in the future mm. not that i would want to fight i'd uh like them signing bobby nash him and i mm. are gonna fight on the same card which is so cool he's a teammate of mine now you know and so i think i i don't care about who i fight as much because i'm gonna ruin their life I care about like my friends that are going to come and, and, and grow with me. Everyone that's going to fight me, I'm sorry, but you're not going to win. I'm going to beat every single person there is. And, and we can be friends after, but like, you're not, you're not going to make money fighting me. You're, you will, but you're not going to continue to improve. And, and I don't, I don't wish bad on anyone. So I don't want to see anyone. I don't want them to fight me. You know, anyone that I've idolized right now, I don't want to fight because I'm going to be, I'm going to make it dirty, nasty, and there's going to be a lot of violence, and it's going to be really bad, especially for the next guy I fight, because I, I only got to throw a couple punches that last fight. I was so tired. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to fight. Like, we're working hard, so it's going to be a bad night for whoever I have to. What, what kind of adjustments have you made since the last fight? See, I started working with uh, Mind Lock. I started using uh, different tools. Like, when I go to practice now, I'm focused on uh, you know, short-term goals, long-term goals, attitude goals. I go into practice with, you know, a certain task on top of giving it in my all. There's certain things now I tell myself, 
So I make sure that I'm working on the jab. That's my biggest thing right now, bro. I'm getting deadly with the jab. And honestly, I think a huge thing that's going to lead to uh, my success is strength, my strength and conditioning coach with Phoenix, uh, with Chris. He, he, this guy's, I'm, I'm using muscles that I haven't used in years. You know, I'm fatigued. I'm always fatiguing the body, blowing, blowing the lungs. Like he's showing me and teaching me there's a lot to do with the body to be in tip top shape. Like even when you're tired, you're, you're, you're ready to go. So I think the people that I'm surrounding myself with and the attitude going in to every day, believe I don't work anymore, dude. I don't work no more. Let's go. I got all day to just surround myself. I work an eight hour day laying floor and then do a two hour training session. If I went and did four to six hours a day of just training, imagine how much better I will get. Also, Ariel, my jujitsu coach, Black Belt, uh, just came to Michigan Top Team. I'm already nasty with a Dars now. Like I've been going to his extra classes during the day and and learning from him at night and just guys that motivate me that that want that are really good at what they do. I get to soak it up again. So I keep getting these top notch uh, minds, coaches, athletes around me to just keep allowing myself to to never sit in one spot. That's what that's the big change. Being a, a full time fighter is a game changer. You don't have to worry about waking up the next day to put in yeah. hours of work. And, and you're all bad. I guess, yeah, and it gives you like the freedom to just add things to your schedule if you really wanted to, right? During the day. You gotta want it though. You gotta want it because when you have free time, all of a sudden you catch yourself doing nothing, being less productive. <laughs> you gotta fucking go and do more. You gotta keep going. Like if you're bored, it's like start writing down a list of what, what you mm. can do today. Mm. You know, you don't have to work. But also, you can't go blowing all that money because you're not making UFC money, old. You know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, yeah, that's fun. So, so you and you and Bobby Nash are, are in the pits together right now, getting ready. Yeah, yeah we're grinding, bro. It's fun. Mm -hmm. He's a big boy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm posting Snapchats of him tossing me around, and and all my friends are like, why are you letting him throw you like that? And I'm like, ah, he's huge, bro. Mm -hmm. There's no stopping it, bro. So, you know, we're colliding, two titans clashing, and, and we're we're gassing each other up when we're he, he could be hitting mitts with someone else, and I'm looking over like, yeah, baby, at a boy one, two, nice, that's gonna put, you know, we're out here making each other better. And I think when that comes fight night, when we're in the same locker room and you know, I get to watch my uh my my boy go to go to war, mm. like it's gonna be a different vibe. Yeah, no doubt, man. So, you know, you mentioned, you know, your expectations. What is the expectations of the performance on November 11th? Um, a lot of striking. I want to see blood. I want to, every time that I hit that guy in my last fight, even though there was no one in the crowd, it got loud. People, I could hear my, everyone, shit got loud. I want that energy of people just go, <clears throat> you know, I need that. That's what I do every time. And that's how I know that I did my job and I, and I did everything leading up to the fight correct. I got to go out there. I have to expose these guys. I have to keep my fine name, you know, with that. I haven't lost in three years or whatever. Let's keep going. I'm not here to lose. I'm here to take checks. I'm here to take necks. Let's go. Like, I got to win. I got to put on for my city, my my family, my sponsorships, everyone that believes in me, myself. It's a big deal. All right, man. November 11th, XFC 43, Atlanta, lightweight championship tournament. It's going to be... Uh something that i think a lot of people are going to tune into man because of you and um, yeah. and who doesn't like tournaments man everybody likes to be, especially yeah. with ones with the belt at the end that's that's something you do have Dude, to watch yeah well thank you for having me on brother it's been a blessing and i can't wait to talk to you after this fight or whenever